you know, we in the city of Cleveland are taking a comprehensive approach towards uh, violence, and particularly youth violence, uh, by enforcement, uh, prevention, uh, intervention, and really creating opportunities. And uh, as we're setting up the infrastructure for that to happen and to be successful, Mr. Deskin and this swearing in today is essential to us being successful. So we'll be swearing in Mr. Deskin as a chief. Uh, uh, now I'm elevating this position to chief, meaning that it would be a cabinet level position and it will be an executive assistant to the mayor and his primary, his primary purpose will be to uh, handle those, uh, uh, the infrastructure around prevention, intervention, and opportunities for young people uh, and, and the helping in the uh, engagement of, of the community that helps with the consent decree far beyond, I believe, any other city has engaged in, in dealing with consent decrees and, and also engagement to reduce violence in the city of Cleveland, particularly with youth. So, uh, Mr. Deskin uh, is a federal, has been a federal prosecutor for uh, more than 30 years, joined the prosecutor's office, uh, the county prosecutor's office, office in December of 2013 as the chief prosecutor for the juvenile division and director of crime prevention. During his tenure at the Justice Department, Mr. Deskin, uh, as an assistant U.S. attorney in Boston, Chicago, Los Angeles, and he is a native Clevelander. Uh, he helped shape and implement the department's Project Safe Neighborhood and Project Century um, strategy to reduce uh, violence, uh, crime using data-driven initiatives and broad-based community collaboration. So you can see just that paragraph in and of itself hits at the heart of what we, uh, our expectation of Mr. Deskin. Since uh, taking charge of the juvenile division, he has led the proactive effort to crack down on youth gang violence within the detention center and in neighborhoods throughout the throughout Cuyahoga County. His work with the police chief and community groups uh, alike to deter uh, juvenile crime and present uh, at-risk uh, youngsters with more positive options. Again, uh, focusing on what we, um, our expectations are. He has also forged closer ties between the prosecutor, uh, prosecutor at the juvenile court and those who work downtown at the Justice Center, which means he know a lot of people. <laughs> He's uh, worked with a lot of people. Uh, they respect him, and so uh, he doesn't have to build those relationships. He already has them, and, and we anticipate that um, he'll hit the ground running. Mr. Deskin grew up in the Glenville and Shaker Heights neighborhoods in Cleveland and graduated from St. Ignatius High School. Anybody from St. Ed's here? <laughs> Uh, okay, so we good to go. Now. We good to go. Uh, he received an undergraduate and a law degree from Boston College. He additionally served as the first assistant county, uh, well, I already mentioned that, um, a county prosecutor. Are you ready, Mr. Desk? I am, Your Honor. Okay. Could you raise your right hand and repeat after me? I state your name. I, Dwayne Deskins. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I'll support the Constitution of the United States. That I'll support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. The codified ordinances. The codified ordinances. And charter. And charter. Of the city of Cleveland. Of the city of Cleveland. And I will honestly. And I will honestly. Uh, faithfully. Faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge the duties of. Discharge the duties of. Chief of Prevention. Chief of Prevention, Intervention, Intervention, and Opportunity, and Opportunity for Youth and Young Adults, for Youth and uh, Young Adults, to the City of Cleveland, to the City of Cleveland, State of Ohio, State of Ohio, during my continuance in said office, in my continuance in said office. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Repeating the oath may be the most challenging part of this job. Um, <laughs> 
the issues we face in terms of youth violence, and those of you who know me well know that I'm always seemingly about the work, um, are man-made. And we need to recognize that it's not one group of people killing another group of people. These are man-made problems. So therefore, by definition, they have man-made solutions. And that all of us have a stake in them. And every step of the way, we will be calling on our partners in government, city, state, federal, our partners in the business community, our private sector, our foundations, to help lift up our young people. This is, as the mayor always likes to say, the least of these. But in most important, this is our future and the future of this country. And if we decide that they are worth the effort, we will make sure that our streets are child safe for every person who wants to get an education, call the city home, get a job, raise a family. And that we will all have a stake in that success. And that starts today. We've been engaged with that in our consent decree, which is sweeping, but only part of the process. What the mayor has announced today and in the last few days and what the people voted on in the election is that they want something different. They don't want the same old, they're looking for something that's more sweeping, more comprehensive, more inclusive. And members of the faith community, our business leaders, our foundations, our government leaders should too. And so I want to thank the mayor for this unbelievable opportunity. In many ways, uh, I always try to, people say, well, where are you going to be in five years? And I always like to say, well, the good Lord sends me. And, and I've been trying so hard. And I just appreciate the honor that the mayor's given me to continue the effort. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. So um, you have some paperwork to sign, and then uh, you can come to my office. We'll take pictures. You can bring back to the office whoever you want to take pictures with. For the media, uh, you do have an opportunity. Uh, once we do all that, if you want, you can uh, um, uh, talk to Mr. Deskin on this subject. Uh, uh, you can talk to Mr. Deskin uh, after we finish uh, what we're doing. So if you want to hang around, you want to interview him, that's fine. Go. Um, could you just explain, first of all, what kind of resources are you going to have at your disposal to deal with youth violence, and how do you deploy them? Okay, so first and foremost, that the, the mayor and the people of the city of Cleveland have given us, uh, through the tax levy, uh, some resources to use to help define the issue of youth violence. Uh, we tend to employ those resources judiciously. Uh, we're going to have uh, intervention people. We're going to have uh, to try and stop violence before it happens. We're going to have crime analysts to help us see a little bit over the horizon so that we can try and, and you know, prevent more than we have to uh, arrest. And then uh, we're going to have, have an assistant who will be there to help me. We're going to do some uh, data-driven analyses of some of the crime we see in the city and, and things we can do to stop it. But I think the important piece, the larger piece, is what I mentioned in my remarks, and that is we have lots of resources across the city and across the county. Um, and one of the things the mayor wants to do is take all the good work that people are doing, public and private, um, and see if we can kind of bring those resources together to try to help young people in a more coordinated way so that we reduce duplication and we try to fill in the gaps, things that are not being done for young people because we're doing all the same things, perhaps even with the same people. Um, so I think that he's looking at resources that are not necessarily, quote, under my budget or under my authority, but more or less building relationships with people to see if we can all come together holistically to try and address the issues of youth violence. What, you mentioned filling in the gaps. What yes. gaps do you see? I mean, what, what kind of new things do you want to do? One of the things I wanted to do in the first few days in this job is to take a look at all of the different people and organizations that are part of this. Uh, it's quite a number, to be quite frank. And then the harder part is, is that when you see all the good work that's being done, you have to think critically, and that's one of the things that lawyers are good at, and that is, where are the weaknesses? Where are the things that allow us to still have uh, folks drag our young people off into criminal conduct at such an early age and then try to see how can we abate that. Um, again, this is a, most of the violence we see in the project we're directing here is directed at young people who are not yet fully mature. And the people who are dragging them into crime are offering them things that any young person would find attractive. Um, we see that here and across the country. And the question is, as a great city and in a great state and in a great county, with 
businesses and foundations, we should be able to offer our young people something, something better, and make them feel that this is something that they want to invest in as opposed to the things that the other people do. You say that you know, people who are dragging the kids into crime are offering them things and they get yes. them to Sure. What are they offering? Oh, it's, again, nationwide. Uh, access to things like excitement, uh, how are we keeping our kids busy, uh, access to resources, money, how are we keeping our young people employed, um, sense of, of worth, sense of worth, how are they seeing that the efforts they put into their education and other things will lead to a better future, um, things like that, that are all appealing to young people no matter what walk of life, because remember every horrible person started out as a kid and wasn't a horrible person. And they got and fell into the lure that those kinds of folks offer them. And uh, it's never what they think it's going to be, but it does sound enticing, and that's why so many young people do it. And, and so we're gonna try and break that uh, pipeline and provide meaningful opportunity to prevent violent crime. You know, when you point to people already doing work in the police yes. area on yes. this, uh, people are doing lots of work, and yet we're seeing homicides go up again. Not as high as they were in the 90s, maybe, but, you know, higher than they were a couple of years ago. What do you think is changing? Do you think you need to do something different? I think that that's true. I think that we're at a special time, I think, in our city and I think and across the country, where, where there are people who are, are really concerned that we're not aggregating our resources um, in a way that toward the constructive end. Uh, everybody wants to see an issue, define the issue, fix the issue as they see it. But, you know, you can't build a house with 12 people doing different things. You have to have some sense of coordination. And I think that we want to build a house that, that will last and that we only are going to try to see if we can collaborate with folks to let what they do work for all of us. And, and my sense is I think this is a great and generous city. And, and I think that that is an ask that, that people are waiting to hear and, and will respond favorably to. I just wanted some basic things. I mean, do you have employees under you, or what's the size of your budget? I mean, just the nuts and bolts details you can share. Um, I have uh, an, an assistant, Ms. Bonner, uh, who will be working with us, a uh, fabulous young woman and uh, very skilled. Uh, as I said, I mentioned it before, we will have additional people staffing up. Now, actually, I've only been sworn in now for a whole of 10 minutes. Uh, we will uh, have additional staff people. And to be honest, is this is not a one-day, one-year project. I think that you're going to see uh, us over time as we show ourselves to be more valuable, getting more resources. But I think the key part, as I keep saying, is that what the mayor doesn't want is some new bureaucracy. He wants to take this office and use the existing bureaucracy, public and private, to see if we can coordinate our efforts to, to really have a, a more meaningful impact on young people. That's what he's hoping for. Any questions? We good? Great. Thank good. you so much. Thank, no, no, Nick, thank you so much. Appreciate your time.